welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator 24. Nowadays, I'm exploring the Cessna 172 and in this regard, I'm making a series of videos which are available on my channel. Now, this video is about covering the ILS approach, the RNP approach and plus the VR approach. So, uh, this video has got three sections. You can just skip to any of the sections that you want and I will just take you through all the procedures. Uh, this uh, video is about uh, the ILS approach and landing. I'm doing this short flight from Lahore to Islamabad and uh, uh, soon I will be landing at Islamabad International Airport. So right now everything is going good. I'm uh, uh, cruising at uh, 6,000 feet and the speed is 98 knots and uh, the plane is actually following uh, the flight path. So everything is good so far. Now, um, let's prepare this plane uh, for the landing and uh, for the approach. So, let's uh, have a look at the arrival um, uh, chart, or which is also known as the STAR, Standard Terminal Arrival. Now, there are a few things that you have to do over here. Uh, either uh, you can do it from here, or what I can do is this, uh, just to make um, everybody's life simple. I can just uh, bring this view over here, press tab, and I can get the tab over here. <laughs> this is magical. <laughs> now you have to set actually uh, the uh, the runway and the approach. So runway 28 right will be used uh, for the landing. I will be landing at this runway. And um, um, yeah, I can change the procedure. Either I want to have an ILS approach, localizer, VFR pattern or VOR. So there are, are different basically types of approaches. Uh, so uh, I will be using ILS and uh, this is 28 right Z. If you want to change the procedure, you can change it. Otherwise, just keep it like this. That's it. Now, uh, what I can do is this. I can click this uh, option and I can have access to the charts uh, for this uh, airport, Islamabad International Airport, 28 right, um, arrivals. Let's not look at the departures. Obviously, you'll be looking at the arrivals, 28 right. And uh, you can filter out. As you can see, you can see all as well. And uh, this is all as well. And 28 right. <laughs> so, uh, if you click this, you will be able to see the star over here. So at ISDO, your altitude should be 6,000 feet. And if I press tab again, uh, you can see I'm already flying at 6,000 feet. And uh, that's it. Then there is a speed constraint. Obviously, I'm not flying a big plane. So I'm below 20, 220 knots. So I will be just coming from this point in deck, as you can see it over here. In deck. And then I will go to ISDO, this is the point, and then from there, I'll turn left and go for the approach and the final approach. Let's uh, bring up uh, the final pl uh, flight plan as well. And over here, so right now you can see this cursor is blinking because it means the plane is actually going towards Akbar. So now after Akbar, it will go to Indic. So this is being changed as you can see. The heading is also coming and uh, plus uh, the distance uh, to index is also coming and then to different waypoints and the altitudes are also coming. If you want to scroll through the flight plan, you can do this. Uh, let me just go back again. Uh, flight plan. Let's, uh, let's press it. So you can scroll through these points and just bring your cursor over here. As soon as you see this hand sign, press left mouse button right and then you can have a view of all the points. Now you can see at different points, uh, different altitude is coming at uh, this point. This is IBIP 6. This is the final approach fix. You should be at 3,700 feet. Why it's coming like this? Let's have a look at it. So press tab and bring, bring this tab over here. Let's go back and instead of arrival, let's go for the approach. Because you know, uh, you have uh, the arrival procedure, uh, how you arrive at an airport and then you have an approach procedure. So let's say if you are um, going to land at runway 10, left or right, your arrival procedure remains the same for Islamabad International Airport, maybe for other airports it's different, but the arrival procedure remains the same. You come to Indek, you come to ISDO, but instead of uh, going uh, taking this path, the plane actually goes left like this and then comes and lands again. So that's the basically the approach procedure. So arrival and approach are two different things. So first you have arrival and then you have approach. So I'm, I will be landing at 28 right. So for 28 right, this is the procedure that we are using. Select it, as you can see, it's highlighted in green. So it's the active one. Just go over here and then have a look at the approach plate and we will get some information over here. So now this is the approach plate. If you're coming from ISDO, uh, this is the point. Um, you will just go in this heading 315 degrees, then at this point, Phoenix. 
uh, you should be at uh, 3,700 feet and then you will go uh, towards this point. And uh, what is the uh, final approach fix? This is just near the runway 6, so D6. This is basically 6 nautical miles away uh, from the runway. D6 means DME. DME is actually distance measuring equipment, so this tells you how far you are from the runway. Heading of the runway is 278 degrees, ILS or the localizer. Uh, frequency is 110.7 as I've told you before this is a ground based navigation device and it uh, emits signals the plane picks up the signals and it knows whether it's aligned with the runway or not left or right and uh, plus it's uh, following the glide uh, path or the glide slope uh, so this is the glide slope so at Phoenix I will be at 3700 feet uh, right over here then uh, the plane will keep on flying in this uh, on this altitude 3700 uh, we'll come to this point and uh, from this point the plane will start to descend towards the runway angle of three degrees and uh, the descent rate would auto automatically calculated by the by the plane uh, but uh, three degrees down and then it will touch the runway and uh, that's it so this is the information that you need all you have to do is this enter the ILS information over here in this plane G1000 so 110.7 and the name is also coming for the localizer IBIP it's an identifier and plus the Morse code is also coming 110.7 press stop again get rid of it and let's enter this frequency over here uh, press uh, left mouse button and uh, right click um, now this is the active yeah, 110.7 that's it now press this button swap and this will now be the active frequency if you want to uh, track this frequency, just get rid of the yoke and uh, you can have uh, this information over here on the primary flight display. Just go to this primary flight display options and then click this option bearing bar. And that's it. Now you have uh, the ILS uh, coming over here, nav1, you can have nav2 and uh, ADF as well and GPS. So right now the plane is following the GPS, so you'll get the GPS information over here, how far it is. Uh, from the next wave point what is the heading of the next wave point and plus if you press this you will uh, get the ILS nav one so right now as the plane is uh, is far so that's why um, it's not picking up the frequency but as soon as I'm near uh, this uh, airport then it will start picking up the information regarding this that's it and plus if you press DME as well you will start to get uh, this more information over here as you can see nav one 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 zero point seven this is the frequency for the ILS and then it will start telling me the, uh, the distance but uh, for this I have to be near the airport so what I can do is this for bearing 1 I can have the ILS information and for bearing 2 I can have uh, the GPS track or what I can do is this I can also track the VR for Islamabad International Airport so uh, you can see this VR is coming um, it's, it comes like this you can see uh, let me just zoom in it is showing you this VR it comes like this over here although uh, if you're looking at the navy graph charts the, it's a bit different but over here in these charts you have this kind of a circle and dot in the middle and you have then you have a frequency uh, the name of the the, the identifier uh, for this vr is btr and the frequency is 114.6 so for the other uh, channel i can have 114.6 so let's uh, bring the mouse over here left click right click it's now here And let's make it the active frequency 114.6 BTR. You can see the name or the identifier is coming, so it means you are uh, tracking the right VR. If I press bearing 2, so instead of ILS, uh, I'm not tracking the ILS on this, I will be tracking NAV2 BTR. So it's now telling me it's 107 nautical miles away, and the, um, and the heading is 326. Now, although the heading for this BTR is 278 because, you know, you'll be coming like this and then you will be intercepting this uh, this uh, straight line. If you draw a straight line, you have to intercept it at some point and then you have to turn right, left uh, for the landing. So that's why um, it's 278. But right now it's telling you 326 degrees because as, as per the current uh, position of the plane, this is over here. So this is 320 six degrees but it will keep on changing so uh, let's also track the vr we track the viewers because in case if the ils is not working or the gps is not working 
in case of any failure uh, you have uh, you know uh, your viewer also there now uh, for the heading bug uh, i will set it to 278 as you can see this is the heading 278 so you can see right now its heading is 282 so let's move it to 278 because now what I'm going to do is this I'm actually going to uh, as soon as I'm uh, uh, I've crossed ISDO then I will start the descent to 3700 feet I will just adjust the altitude over here let's do it by moving the larger knob 4000 and then I can move the small one to 3700 right now I will not descend but uh, as soon as I've cleared ISDO then I will start the descent by pressing vertical speed and then I can you know I will go with the nose down uh, during the descent I will just try to keep the speed again at 75 or 70 knots and uh, for the approach a uh, good speed is 65 knots um, so this is how I will be adjusting the throttle to basically control the speed so everything is now set and I think I have uh, covered everything now then there is another thing that you can do um, in this uh, plane you can have uh, your top of descent calculations now top of descent is actually a point from where you start the descent and it's coming over here as you can see TOD is coming top of descent just right before ISDO uh, this descent is coming because I'm flying at uh, 6000 feet and obviously by this point I should be at 6000 feet it's mentioned over here so that's why it's coming if I press uh, the flight plan uh, you will start to see uh, this uh, information uh, for the active VNAV profile. VNAV is basically vertical navigation. Whether to go up, down, at what rate you should be going up or down. So this is actually the VNAV navigation. Uh, so for this plane, obviously, right now, the VNAV is being used for uh, the descent and for the landing. Uh, the waypoint is uh, ISDO, and the top of descent will begin in the next 48 minutes. So it will take the plane to... Uh, 48 minutes to reach this point I can cancel the VNAV and everything will disappear and I can enable VNAV uh, I did this be be because you know initially you could see that ISDO there was not nothing is nothing was coming uh, so that's why uh, you have to fix it so we have to cancel it once enable it and uh, that's it now the uh, target um, um, uh, feet per minute or the um, uh, target descent rate should be 571, 72 feet. So the plane actually does it automatically. You really don't have to do anything. All you have to do is this: adjust your altitude to uh, to the altitude to which you want to descend. Uh, I've already adjusted it to 3,700, but I haven't pressed any button. So plane will keep on flying at 6,000 feet. So weather uh, near this point when the top of descent is there, I can press vertical speed and then adjust uh, the nose up and down myself to actually have. A proper descent profile or magical button VNAV. If I press this button, the plane will start to descend itself to 3,700 feet, and it will actually follow this uh, target uh, descent rate. So it's really magical. So once I'm near this point, I will show you. So this is how uh, this uh, uh, the VNAV thing works in this plane. G1000 is really a very nice and powerful uh, uh, device, nice GPS device. And um, the best thing about Cessna is this, that if you don't want to you know, fly this plane on autopilot, you can fly it yourself in order to have a good control over the plane. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, if you really want to practice, uh, then you can go back to Cessna 152. Uh, no autopilot, nothing. You have to fly it yourself. <laughs> now the plane is near top of descent. Let's do a few things and uh, let's first of all adjust the altimeter. Uh, so let's get the barometric pressure in Istanbul. If I just, uh, I can uh, go from here. Actually, <laughs> this is a new flight simulator getting used to it. So it's 1017. So let's adjust it over here, the altimeter. 1017, it's now adjusted. And right now you can see this line is broken. Um, it should be connected to this point. So after ISDO, there should, there should be a line for Renux. So let's see if uh, the plane doesn't follow the this path then we can do a few things fly in the heading mode and then turn left right now you can see the VOR is being tracked for uh, Istanbul International Airport 
BTR 306 degrees. Uh, this is on the left. So as soon as the plane keeps on going far, uh, this heading will keep on reducing. It's actually 278. So you can see this arrow. This is actually tracking and this VR. So we know where it is. This is the heading um, bug, uh, our intended heading. This is right now the desired course, 349 degrees, and the plane is going at 349 degrees. So this is how you read the primary flight display. With some flights, uh, you will just uh, get used to it. Now, during the, uh, the descent, I will reduce uh, uh, the throttle and I will keep the uh, speed at 80 knots. So once the plane starts to descend, the speed will increase. So that's why you have to reduce the throttle in order to control the speed. Uh, remember this thing that if you're carrying on maneuvers at high speed, uh, then there are chances you will be missing uh, your approach or your flight path. path. Um, but if you are at a good speed, um, you can easily control the plane and it's easy uh, for to take turns as well. If on the turns, uh, obviously, uh, the plane is at a high speed, longer radius is required. So for this plane, in order to have better control, uh, you should reduce the speed. It should be in the controlled mode. Now you can see the nav uh, information, nav1 information is also coming for the ILS, um, which is 110.7. This is the ILS frequency, 19.2 nautical miles. Now one thing, uh, in order to um, follow this uh, uh, nav1, in order to have a proper ILS approach, I will be changing the CDI uh, to uh, this mode rather than the GPS mode. Now you can see the plane is out of this uh, GPS mode, roll mode again. I can press the snap mode again to take it back. Uh, so uh, remember this thing every time when you change uh, the, um, any information over here by pressing the CDI, the plane actually gets out of this, the, the, uh, the mode it is in right now. So that's why you have to adjust it. So now I have uh, crossed ISDO, top of descent 24, 22 seconds away, 20 seconds. Now I have set the altitude, I will descend to 3700 feet, this is the point at which I will be intercepting the glide slope and when I say intercepting the glide slope, I will just explain it to you right now, what actually I mean. So now um, you can see 5, I can press VNAV and now you can see V path is coming, vertical path. So now the plane will actually start to descend. Now the next point is uh, Phoenix and then the plane will actually go to a final approach fix which is roughly six not roughly exactly <laughs> six nautical miles away from the runway so final approach fix is always like this just six nautical miles before the runway now let's uh, see if uh, the plane is descending the descent should have started I think I didn't reduce the speed so what I can do is this I can use vertical speed and then I can press down and the plane will actually follow. Keep on reducing the throttle. So right now the vertical speed is 900 feet per minute. Usually this VNAV thing, hap um, it works even in higher speeds. I think there was um, this discontinuity due to which maybe I think this happened. But uh, you can also do this. I will explore <laughs> why it never happened. But uh, anyhow, you always have the option of using vertical speed in order to, you know, descend. Right now, this it's uh, 9 feet per minute. You can see it was going at a high speed. That's why I didn't reduce the throttle just to show you. So you can further reduce the throttle and let the speed go down. I can further reduce the throttle. So desired track is 280 degrees. The plane should be turning towards the runway at this point speed is now reducing now this is blinking it means 1000 feet to go to 3700 
So everything is looking good so far. I think further reduce because I have a very high uh, descent rate. Maybe I can just pitch up a bit to reduce the speed. Get some more RPMs. Let's now control the speed by controlling the vertical speed. So instead of, you know, adjusting the throttle, we can do this. If I go up, obviously the speed will reduce. The throttle remains constant. And the plane is now at 3700. So this is how you manage the descent. Now you can see the speed is reducing. So just give throttle so that the speed remains at 80 knots. You can see the RPMs. Let's wait for the plane to turn left. If it doesn't, then uh, yes, it's turning left, so it's good. So if there is any break um, over here in, in the flight plan, just wait for it. Otherwise, I could have taken this plane out of uh, the nav mode and would have put it in uh, the heading mode. Right now, you can see the desired track is now 279. So now the plane is aligned with the runway. So we'll go straight. Now at this point, when the plane is flying like this, it's aligned with the with this runway, and you can see that the final approach fix is uh, 5.8 nautical miles away. What I can do is this: instead of now flying in the GPS mode, I can fly in the heading mode. So now the plane is flying in the heading mode, and let's uh, move this to CDI to uh, this option localizer one. So now it's uh, following the localizer. If I press it again, it's following the VR. It's now following the GPS and now it's following the localizer. So now the ILS is slightly towards the right side. As you can see, this coast reflection indicator is showing you that it's on the right side. So I can adjust the heading and uh, we'll make some little bit of adjustments in order to intercept this line. As you can see, I'm a bit off. So now you have to fly in the heading mode and you have to change it to localizer by pressing CDI uh, so that you can get this glide slope information. So there will be a, this diamond uh, which will show you whether you are following the glide slope or not. Let me just adjust the heading. So I have to make some little changes, 178. Now you can see heading is 278 and this is in the middle so I'm aligned with the runway. I think can I see the runway? Yeah, you can see. So 28 left and 28 right. So these two runways are there. So now this is good. So uh, as I was talking to you about this, um, this diamond, if you are near the runway or the airport and uh, this diamond is over here above this center line, then you're coming at a good altitude. Then at certain point, you will be intercepting the glide slope over here. And when it will come in the middle, I will just show you over here. So approaches, like I told you before, as uh, I, we were looking at it. So at this Renex, you should be at 3,700 uh, feet. And then over here at the final approach fix, you should be again at 3,700 feet. So you will keep on flying like this in a straight line at, uh, um, at an altitude of 3,700 feet. Now at this point, actually this diamond will move to the middle and then you will press this uh, option approach and the plane will automatically start to follow this glide slope. Actually Jeep is written as glide path as well, but um, um, usually when you are doing ILS approach, you call it glide slope and for VNAV um, approach, uh, you call it uh, the glide path. Sorry, I said VNAV. Uh, it's actually RNAV approach or RNP approach. <laughs> Excuse me for that. Okay, now let's uh, make some adjustments in the heading. As you can see heading, I'm changing 284 because, you know, I was slightly off. Then I can just go back to 278 in order to, you know, properly follow this line. Now you can see this diamond has started to move in the middle. So it means I'm just somewhere here. 
and soon I will be here. And at this point, I will intercept the glide slope. So this is uh, what intercept the glide slope means. Then I can further reduce uh, the speed. I will keep it at 60, 65 knots for the landing and I will extend the flaps. As I've told you before, the flaps actually uh, provide drag which help uh, the plane to reduce the speed and also um, it provides lift at lower speed. And uh, for this, I'm going to go for full flap landing. Now you can see, uh, I'm also this uh, um, viewer also there in the center. This arrow is following towards this uh, VOR. But it's slightly off because as this VOR is in the middle of the two runways. So it will be slightly towards the left side, but I'm following uh, this localizer. Now as this diamond is coming in the middle, I can approach, uh, activate approach, pressing this button, and now you will see the descent has started. With this, I can reduce the RPM So now, um, the magic of this approach button is this, that the plane will actually follow this, this diamond, this uh, glide slope. And plus, you know, uh, you can see the autopilot is making little bit of adjustments to keep this line in the middle, so that you know, we are properly aligned with the runway. So now I can start extending the flaps and uh, you will see, as soon as I will start extending the flaps, the speed will reduce drastically. So you, will, uh, you have to adjust the throttle in such a way, otherwise the plane will stall. can see speed was reducing a lot so I have to give throttle so that's how you adjust it let's go with the full flap and let's give more throttle so let's keep the speed at 65 knots and plus uh, turn on the taxi and the landing lights now you can see the taxi and landing lights are also on all the lights are working, everything is good. The plane is following the glide and the speed is reducing, so let's give more throttle. Just if you uh, keep the runway between these two screws, <laughs> I'm just giving you an idea. <laughs> because you know, once you're landing, you're just looking at the runway. So then you are like, runways in the middle. So I'll keep the speed at 60 knots and plus uh, you can also see the runway over here in the primary flight display. So everything is looking good so far and uh, Now, you, in, in the flight mode in Enciator, you can see LOC is coming, localizer, it means we are following the localizer, autopilot is on, and uh, the plane is following the glide slope. So, it's really uh, a good habit to keep an eye on the FMA in order to know that what kind of a mode uh, your plane is in and what's actually happening. And now you can see the distance is also coming 2.2 nautical miles away from the runway. In Cessna 152, it's a very simple plane, it only has two. Uh, the CDI uh, coast deflection indicators and uh, nothing else so you don't even know the distance <laughs> but uh, this is a good thing about this plane then there is another variant of 172 available in the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 which has Garmin uh, G530 and 430 that is also good but for uh, Cessna 152 uh, there is nothing, no DME but G1000 is good. Okay. So at any time I can just turn off the autopilot and try to land the plane myself. And uh, can we see the papi lights also? There should be. Right now, in this version of the Microsoft Flight Simulator, they are not coming. There should be lights over here. So now I can uh, deactivate the autopilot by pressing this button, autopilot, and then I can just take control of the plane and uh, just try to land it. 
I will just try to keep this diamond in the middle. So if it goes down, I go down. If it goes up, I go up. It's very simple. So that's how you control your vertical speed in order to land. Just 10 feet above the runway, I will perform a flare. It is like I'll pitch up and uh, the nose a bit. And uh, I will re reduce the thrust or keep it in idle. So I will be targeting this point for the landing, slightly off the center line. Let's reduce the throttle, pitch up a bit, and you know, idle. And let's apply brakes to stop the plane. So that's how you perform an ILS approach and landing with this plane. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to perform an RNP approach and then land the plane. Now, while talking about approaches and landings, there are two different types. Um, if you talk about a high level you know, bifurcation, uh, the first one is a precision approach and the second one is a non-precision approach. ILS is a precision approach in which ground-based um, um, localizer is used, which emits radio frequencies, the planes pick it up and they just land. It's really precise and the precision is really good. Depending upon uh, the equipment that the plane has, it can be really precise. So in uh, low visibility, uh, you can even just go for it. Even uh, if visually you cannot see the runway, you're properly aligned with the runway and you can land it. Then there are non-precision approaches and majorly there are two. Uh, one is the RNP approach or the RNAV approach and another, another one is the VR approach. So in this video, I will talk about the RNP approach. It is also called the RNAV approach. These two terms are actually interchangeable. RNAV stands for area navigation and RNP stands for required navigational precision. So RNAV is actually uh, very simple. Uh, when you are uh, following the GPS coordinates, you are doing an RNAV approach. And RNP is actually uh, more precise uh, in talking in, in, in terms of precision. RNP uh, emphasizes on precision. So your GPS device or the flat tra uh, flight tracking device that uh, your plane has should be really precise. If it's not precise, then there are chances you will miss the runway. So that's why it's known as the RNP approach. Now, during the course of this video, I will explain more things to you. But first of all, let's make a flight plan. Uh, today, I will be doing the short flight from Sialko to Istanbul. And uh, at Istanbul, I will be landing at runway 28 right. And that will be an RNP approach. So first of all, let's get the tab and uh, let's uh, start the flight planning. Uh, let's go to this page, the flight planning page, and uh, let's open this. So my departure is Salcote International Airport. It's a short flight, roughly for one hour. And I'm already at runway 22. And then for the arrival, I am going to land at Islamabad International Airport. Runway 28 right is automatically selected. Now for the procedure, we have to change the procedure. Right now, you can see ILS 28 right Y is already selected. Just click this. And then you will see multiple approaches coming uh, direct uh, for visual landing. Then you have VOR. Uh, I will make a separate video for that. And then you have RNAV. So RNAV or the RNP approach. So let's select this RNAV approach. Now it is asking for a transition. Now um, I can select a transition, but it will take me somewhere here, um, somewhere here, and then I'll just go back. So instead of selecting a transition, Isdur or Kalmi, Kalmi is actually on the other side. And uh, this is Isdur. So I'll just go with this. And I will change the procedure. Now the procedure is change. And uh, plus uh, for the arrival procedure, I will also not use it. I'll just go directly towards this point, Phoenix and land. Because let's say if I select an arrival procedure, as I told you before, so the plane will go here and then it will go here. It will be a long flight. So I will be going directly towards Phoenix. So it's uh, really simple. Uh, what I'm going to do is this, just uh, to begin with, for the approach, runway 28 right, just select the approach and uh, you can see RNP is coming, 
28 right. So if I select this, let's wait for it. And now we have the chart. Let, uh, let me just also change uh, the layout. So that we can read the chart clearly. Now this RNB uh, approach plate is just like the ILS approach plate. So now you're, you're seeing that there is this uh, initial approach fix coming, uh, which is IAF, ISDR. So from here, the approach actually starts, but I'm flying directly towards it. You can just do anything that you want. It's a flight simulator. <laughs> so now what will happen is this, that in this uh, approach plate, uh, the plane actually follows all the GPS coordinates and um, it will take you to this point, Renux. Now, the, um, um, as you can see, the G, uh, Garmin G1000 actually interacts with the flight management guidance system, which is FMGS of the plane. So once it knows that uh, the plane is at this point, and then from here, it has to descend towards the runway. This is known as the glide path. If you talk about ILS, this is glide slope. And uh, in RNP, they call it the glide path. So it knows it has to follow the glide path heading 278 and uh, there is a specific descent rate that will be calculated by the G1000. So it will start to descend towards the runway. And if your GPS is really precise, it will be aligned with the runway. So no ground-based device is used to basically guide the plane towards the runway. So if you're really familiar with ILS approach and landing, you will be able to do it. There is just one little trick that you have to do and you can land this plane. So now I'm going to take this plane up in the air and as soon as I'm near Renix, I'll just take you from there. Now the plane is near the Islamabad International Airport. So just uh, let's uh, go through a few things before uh, we proceed towards the final approach fix and then the landing. So if you look at the navigation display, you'll find this option flight plan. And in the flight plan, you're seeing all the waypoints or the fixes before the landing and uh, plus your vertical speed or the VNAV profile is also coming. Uh, you have to be IS-410 at this point. You should be at 3,700 feet. And the top of descent is roughly 18 minutes away. It's uh, here and uh, you have to start your descent. And uh, then the vertical speed target is 627. I can start the descent by adjusting the altitude over here to 3,700. So let's uh, reduce the altitude. But right now the descent will not start because I haven't done anything. In order to start the descent, I have three options. Either I can use vertical speed, I can use flight level change, and then there is this magic button, which is VNAV. So if I press this, then the plane will automatically follow this uh, vertical speed target and it will descend to 3,700 feet. Uh, but for this, I have to reduce the throttle. That's it. Then uh, you can see this is uh, another point, IS-410. This is uh, the final approach fix. That's why it's coming as FAF. If you look over here, you will see OPIS RNAV, which is required navigation. Uh, sorry, uh, area navigation. <laughs> because I'm going for an RNP approach. That's why I read this. RNAV GPS. So it's up. Then uh, runway 28, uh, right, LNAV and VNAV. LNAV is your uh, lateral navigation and VNAV is your vertical navigation. As I've told you before, uh, the uh, once you are doing this GPS navigation, you're basically performing an RNAV and area navigation based on the GPS coordinates. So that's why uh, the GPS system will be used. So the plane will know, okay, at this point, uh, this is, these are the GPS coordinates and this is the name of this uh, GPS coordinate that it is flying to, at what altitude the plane should be at, what is the speed, and you know, the flight management guidance system do all the calculations and uh, give you uh, the descent rate and then you uh, just go towards the runway, which is runway 28 right. And, uh, while performing an RNP approach, LNAV and VNAV profiles are used instead of ILS or localizer. So it will just do everything according to that. 
There is another thing that you have to do is this. Adjust the altimeter. If you see the barometric pressure is coming, it's 1013. What I'll do is this. I will just uh, go to Salcote and in the weather, uh, sorry, uh, Islamabad. I'm going to land in Islamabad. So I'll go to weather and I will check what is the barometric pressure, 1015. Remember this thing that um, obviously you have to adjust your altimeter even if you're performing an ILS approach or a VOR approach. Uh, you should have proper reading of the altitude by adjusting the barometric pressure because this plane calculates uh, the altitude based on the change in barometric pressure. So that's why you have to adjust the barometric pressure in order to have right and accurate altitude landings. Now, if you talk about ILS, ILS is actually on the ground and it tells the plane you know, by picking up the radio frequencies that where the localizer is and what is the descent profile. But while uh, doing a GPS approach, uh, you're using uh, the, the um, RNP approach, uh, using your GPS in the plane. Uh, the plane actually, uh, let me just open this for you. 28 right and I'll go for this RNP now at different points uh, the plane has to be at different altitudes so let's say at this point the plane has to be at 3700 so if your altimeter readings are not correct so your altimeter will show you 3700 but as per the barometric pressure as like your, it is set as per 1013 so you might be up or below uh, this profile and once you start the descent you might miss the runway so that's why it has to be really accurate so you have to get the right readings uh, for the barometric pressure you can change it over here uh, i have already covered it in one of the videos just uh, to tell you right now that if the different units are coming you can always change it go to the primary flight display options and over here you will see altitude units. So this is right now in HPA and you can change it to inches. So it's uh, 29 decimal line or two or 1013 and you can use it by moving this knob, the outer knob, 1015. Now the altitude is adjusted. So just make sure before the RNP approach, uh, your altimeter is adjusted. Now I will just wait for the top of descent to come and as soon as the top of descent is near, I will reduce the throttle, bring the speed to 85 as you can see this limit is coming so not, will not go below this speed. I'll just reduce the speed once I'm over here. I will press this VNAV and then the profile, uh, my plane will actually follow this uh, vertical path towards this point. Renex because at Renex my altitude should be 28, uh, sorry, uh, 5,000, 6 feet, which is like 5,000 plus. So that's why I will, uh, it will just, uh, first of all, adjust at 5,000 and then it will go to 3,700. We will see. And if it doesn't, then we will adjust uh, the vertical path either using the FLC or the vertical speed. So in this video, I'm also going to tell you how to basically handle all this. Now, as you can see that there is just a little time left for the top of descent. So I will now reduce the thrust and uh, reduce the speed. Still have some time. You can see the top of descent is coming over here. Now you must have observed something that just like uh, the eyeless uh, indicator over here you have started to see this uh, G you know, with the diamond this is actually the L nav and V nav profile as you can see so without tuning into the localizer without doing anything now uh, this has automatically started to appear so this is uh, the magic of uh, the RNP approach <laughs> so I've reduced the thrust so that you know I can activate V nav let's see if the plane follows the VNAV path. If it doesn't, then 
I will go for flight level change or maybe vertical speed. Now the speed is reducing. Always remember before the approach, uh, do all the maneuvers at lower speed because then it's easy uh, to control the plane. 22 seconds to go. As you can see, it's coming. Vertical deviation is also coming. I will just explain everything to you right now. Let's uh, press this uh, VNAV button. You can see V path is coming. And uh, it should start following. Interestingly. The descent has started now. You can see the plane has started to go down. And you can see uh, the target vertical path is coming. The flight management guidance system has actually calculated that uh, what should be your um, uh, vertical profile or the descent path and it is trying to keep you over there. Now this is the vertical deviation. This is deviation of the plane from the vertical path. Uh, right now it's just like one feet, one foot above uh, the given vertical path. So it's good. And the angle is three degrees negative. It means it's going down. So it's good. You can see the speed is increasing. So I can further reduce the throttle. Now you can see the, uh, the ind this indicator has started to come, which is telling you either you are deviated from the track or not, or from the vertical path. Now, uh, if you talk about Airbus or Boeing planes, the jet planes, uh, you also see this kind of thing horizontally as well over here, which gives you the lateral uh, alignment with the runway and plus this gives you the horizontal, uh, sorry, the, the vertical alignment with the runway. Uh, but over here, you can see the CDI is coming, which will actually tell you about your lateral navigation. Either you align with the runway or not, and then this is your vertical. Now, while performing um, this RNP approach, you should have a good RVR, which is known as the runway visual range. If you cannot see the runway, then it gets very difficult because till the last point, you don't know whether you align with the runway. If you cannot see the runway, obviously, you'll, you'll not know the alignment. So that's why even if your GPS is, is, is very accurate and uh, you're picking up some good signals, but still you cannot see the runway, then uh, it's uh, kind of a dangerous thing if you attempt to land the plane. So that's why you should have a good runway visual range. As you can see right now, I'm flying in uh, clear skies just to show you for this video. So that's why uh, you can see the runway. And you can see the papi lights are also there. Now everything is good. I can further reduce the speed. Now at this point, what I can do is this. As you can see, I'm now aligned with the runway. The runway is near. And this is in the middle. So it means I can follow this flight path. So instead of now using VPATH, I can simply activate approach the way you use it in the ILS. If I press this button approach, now you will see this diamond has started to appear just like the ILS and now the plane will actually try to keep this in the middle or the flight management guidance system. Let's uh, start reducing the speed and uh, let's start to get the flaps down. I will go with the full flaps landing. Keep it at 65. Just keep on adjusting the throttle in such a way that the speed doesn't reduce drastically. Now, as you can see, the plane is out of the V-path mode. If you look at the FMA, it's in the glide path mode and GPS. So uh, your uh, lateral navigation is coming over here. Any deviation from the runway left to right, it will just be shown over here. And whether you're following the glide path or not, it's coming over here. If I look at this, now you will see the plane is really aligned and it is following the glide path. As this is the glide path, as uh, this diamond is in the middle. So everything is good now. 
um lights were already on <laughs> so i didn't turn off the lights anyhow let's land it today i will be doing another video uh, for the vr approach now you can see the plane is making some little bit of adjustments just to keep this in the middle the cdi needle or the course deflection indicator needle and everything is good uh, can i further extend the flaps once you extend the flaps increase the speed because the flaps uh, not only provide lift they also provide drag so you can see the speed reduces drastically so that's why just make sure that you also adjust the throttle so full flaps and uh, now a few days back i just got a question from one of the viewers then when to discontinue uh, disconnect the autopilot uh it's totally up to you um you can see the approach started from here i was aligned with the runway so that's why uh, you can just like uh, deactivate the autopilot anytime that you want there is another thing i just wanted to tell you just an additional information I can see if I can get this information. No, it's not coming over here, or not shown over here. Uh, what I can do is this. Uh, I can just move this and uh, VR. So let's see what is the VR for BTR. Is the frequency? It is one one four point six. So if I said one one four point six. and set it over here you can see it's picking up now what i can do is this i can just go back and uh, for the cdi i can adjust the course to 278 and that's it so generally what um, the pilots also do also adjust this heading 278 your core um, your uh, this heading bug should be heading towards the runway and uh, you always set your heading bug in the direction in which you are landing because if after the landing you want to fly again and fly in the heading mode you have the proper heading and another thing uh, they always tune into the vr the ground based uh, navigation device the vr somewhere here on the stambhav international airport so that's why now it's uh, plane is in the actually in the roll mode i uh, let me take it in the nav mode as you can see yeah, i changed the cdi so that, that's why the mode changed now it, the plane will align itself with the runway so uh, the vr is somewhere over here so if you are you were going for a vr approach you will not see these indicators They're just like you see for the ils and for this approach um, uh, the rnp approach So in VR, you just tune into VR, and then you just go with the visual references for the landing. Now you can see plane is adjusting its course. So you always keep the VR um, tuned as well, uh, so that you know if your GPS doesn't work, you know where to go. So this is one kind of a tip I just wanted to give to you. Now if I deactivate the autopilot I'll just try to keep it in the middle and this is also in the middle The papi lights is showing all lights red as my altitude was low now it's getting a bit better 500. Now you can see it's in the middle the, the CDI needle so it means I'm following the LNAV path and the diamond is still not coming in the middle so i'm just following these two things just to show you that how precise it can be if you're getting the good signals obviously in the flight simulator you get good signals the signal issue is in the real life due to bad weather or if the now you can see two red and two white it means you know i'm following the glide path and now i can go for the landing if all are red it means i'm at a lower altitude and if uh, they're white more white three or four white then it means i'm coming at a higher altitude so now you can see i'm following this glide path so it is 
precise. It just took me to the runway. And now I'm going to land this plane. My target zone for the touchdown. Just reduce the thrust. Pitch up a bit, perform flare and idle thrust. And now I can apply brakes. So that's how you perform an RNP approach and landing. It can be uh, different for the different airports. As a beginner, I would recommend uh, to uh, basically have a look at the approach plates a lot. Uh, plus your arrival procedures so that you're really familiar uh, with the airport, the arrival procedures and plus uh, the approach. You should know that. So before flying, just uh, do your study, do all the briefing and then you can just easily fly these approaches. This is going to be VOR. It's really simple, not that difficult. So now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to make a short flight over here. And I will be departing from Sialkot International Airport because it's near Islamabad. And uh, I will be landing at, or rather, let me just uh, take this tab out of this holder and let's bring it on the screen. And uh, let me change the orientation. The settings always change. Okay, and let's bring it to medium. Great. Now, um, I will go to Islamabad International Airport. Let me just get rid of this waypoint as I was making a flight plan. So this is the flight plan that I have. Now for uh, the departure, let's say like a departure change procedure. Now I have a departure procedure. And then I can find a route. Uh, let's get rid of this RN and Moxit. They are not required. So now this is there. Now for the runway, uh, I'm going to actually use VOR. So if I go to this option, uh, change procedure or the approach, you will see different approaches coming for 28 right. You have VOR, RNAV and ILS. So this is the VOR approach that I will be using. And uh, plus uh, I can use BTR as an arrival, uh, but it's uh, Coming through Kimmel. Uh, leave it. <laughs> I'll use ISDO. So this is actually a standard arrival if you're coming from this part of the world. So you enter from ISDO. So I've selected now VOR 28, right? Procedure changed. And arrival in the A. And I will also change the procedure. As I know, I've been flying this a lot. This is my home, Islamabad. So that's why easy now. So now I will be going to Islamabad international level. I'll change the flight level. I will be flying at uh, 6,000 feet. Oop, 60,000. Very good. 6,000 feet. And uh, let's uh, send this route to avionics. You can see it's loaded over here. Now I'm going to do a flight. And uh, when I'm near the top of descent, then I will take you from there. So now I'm near Islamabad International Airport. And uh, you can see that the approach that I've selected, VOR DME, it's coming. When talking about approaches, there are two um, major bifurcations for the approaches. One is a precision approach, and another one is a non-precision approach. ILS is a precision approach in which uh, the precision is really high. Uh, the plane can use uh, the instruments to land. That's why it's known as an instrument landing system, ILS. Then there are non-precision approaches. One is... Uh, the RNP approach and another one is the VOR approach. Uh, so um, in VOR approach and plus the RNP approach, you should have good uh, runway visual range, which is known as the RVR, because uh, these are non-precise approaches and uh, you should see the runway. If you cannot see the runway, then you cannot land because you know the instruments are taking you towards uh, the runway. And um, if uh, there is any issue in the GPS, or uh, the weather is not really clear, you cannot see the runway, obviously you will not know either you are properly aligned with the runway or not. So there are a few things that you have to do uh, before you land. Uh, first of all, I'll uh, press tab and uh, I'll uh, get this information for this uh, approach. So 
let's go to the approaches runway 28 right and we have the VOR approach let's have a look at it now first of all you have to enter the VOR uh, frequency in the nav as you can see this is coming and the identifier is BTR 114.6 so first of all let's go here just uh, bring your cursor and uh, put it over here once you see this hand side uh, hand sign left click and then right now you will see this uh, box has jumped to the upper part for nav 1 and uh, just enter 114.6 so now actually I am tuning into the VOR 114.6 and now you can see the identifier it has picked it, picked it up Now after ISDO, I have to start my descent because you know this is the arrival procedure so we have to keep an eye over, over here as you can see it's shown over here so that's why we have to keep an eye now what I'm going to do is this I'm just going to press CDI and plus I'm going to set the course uh, just move this knob and adjust to 278 degrees and I will show you why I'm doing this now press CDI again, again, uh, once you see this GPS. And now if you look at the FMA, the plane is out of the GPS mode. So just press nav again to bring it back to GPS. Now, as you can see, the heading of the runway is 278 degrees. So this is uh, what you have to consider. And plus the VR is also at the start of the runway. It's actually not really placed over here. It's in the middle of the two runways, 28 right and 28 left. Uh, so that's why um, they call it the non-precision approach because you know if you actually follow the VR you're going to land in the middle of the runways. So that's why you should have a good RVR in order to land. And now you can see the beta information is also coming. So in these maps, the Lido maps in the Microsoft Flight Simulator, if you want to identify a VR, it's like this, a circle with um, a dot in it. Uh, usually in the maps it's uh, shown as a hexagonal shape with a square around it which tells you the distance as well which is known as the DME or distance measuring equipment now you can see plane is coming after ISDO there is this um, uh, intermediate fix and then it's the final fix 5.4 BTR this is basically D uh, distance is 5.4 nautical miles away now what you have to do is this you have to descend um, towards the runway uh, after this point after the final approach fix and can you see the final approach fix over here in the flight plan yes you can see that this is coming as BTR 54 final approach fix which means 5.4 nautical miles before the runway and this point is 9.3 nautical miles away the altitude should be 3700 and from here you will just uh, go towards the runway so let's wait for this point is do and after this point I will start the descent and uh, I think there's also a constraint at 5000 over here yes IV28 this point is coming so first of all I will go to 5000 feet and then to 3700 feet I will follow this procedure and then when, once I'm uh, moving in this heading 278 degrees then I will be following the approach now again also adjust the heading bug by moving this knob heading it should also be 278 degrees that's it one more thing you have to adjust uh, the altimeter as well so just uh, Go over here, weather, and get the barometric pressure 1016. Adjust the altimeter. You can use this knob to adjust the altimeter 1016. Uh, right now, the units are coming in HPA. If uh, the units are not coming in HPA, you can use them, uh, change them. Go to PFD op option, and uh, you will see altitude units. Just click this, and over here, you can change the units so right now it's in HPA 1016 just go back back one more time and that's it 
Now another thing that I can do is this: I can have the ILS, uh, sorry, the VR information 114.6 beta over here on this bearing. So go to PFD option and bearing one. Let's get this over here. So if right now I just want to fly towards uh, this uh, VR, I will fly in the heading of 299 degrees. But eventually I will not be following this approach, so that's not a right idea. So let's uh, wait for 278 to appear over here. Then we will turn left. But right now, as I'm flying in the, what you call, GPS mode, that's why I don't really have to worry about it. If I was flying in the, um, in, in the heading mode by pressing this option, then I would have been worried about it. Now you see this uh, cyan color over here, arrow. This is actually pointing towards this viewer, as now we have bearing one and you have this GPS track. If at this point I want, I can also have ILS on the second nav, but right now I'm not doing it. I'm assuming that this runway doesn't have uh, this ILS. So you will be flying to different airports where you might not find ILS or even you cannot perform RNAV, then you have to go for VOR. And then, you know, then there are runways. I, <laughs> I think they don't have anything. Just kidding. Okay. So another thing, uh, this uh, for this Istanbul International Airport, the approach is really good because this viewer is placed at the beginning of this runway, as I've shown you here. But there, there can be runways where viewer is even located here or located here. So they are not even on the runway or with the runway. They are a bit far. So then there are procedures written for these kind of viewer, how to perform a viewer approach. So uh, for this video, I was just selecting um, the, a good runway in which the VR just right over there. But remember this thing, there is no rocket science in performing a VR approach. All you have to do is this, uh, just go towards the runway. And uh, once uh, you see the runway, just go for the landing. You cannot use autopilot uh, for, uh, the, um, for the approach to be followed. That's it. So let's wait for it. I'm just uh, I'm just keeping an eye over here on uh, the VNAV to see what happens. Altitude. Let's uh, move it to 3,700. Yes. Or rather first uh, I'll descend to 5,000 and then I will go to Three thousand seven hundred feet. If I cancel and enable, still it's Isdor is coming. Yeah. Well, let's get it back. You can see top of descent is coming. So after this point, the descent will start. So let's see if any information changes over here. Otherwise, I will just reduce the throttle. Bring the speed to 85 knots. As you can see, there's a limit coming. Let's not go below this. Otherwise, the plane might stall. I can also use uh, the flight level change to descend. Yeah, now you can see IV-28, it's coming. Top of descent in the next 11 seconds. Now plane is turning right. At uh, Now I can press VNAV. And you can see V-Path is coming. And the plane has started to descend. I can further reduce the throttle to keep the speed over here. So that's how you manage the descent. And you can see the target descent rate was 303 uh, feet per minute. And uh, um, right now, current one is 293 feet per minute. I'm just eight feet below the vertical path, the calculated path. Let's increase the throttle. The speed is reducing. 
and uh, the pitch is minus 1.7 degrees. After this turn, I should be able to see the runway. Right now, I've set the weather to clear skies. That's why I will be able to see the runway. Uh, but you cannot uh, do VR, uh, VR approaches if uh, the RVR or the runway visual range is really low. Now, as you can see, these two indicators have started to appear. This is actually um, coming for the GPS. If I just go back, if I just remove it, now oh, you can see it's still coming. So this is also a good indicator. Yeah, see, it's started to disappear. It has actually disappeared. Yeah. Now further reduce the altitude to 3,700. And let's get into the nav mode because I just changed the CDI. Now what I'll do is this, I will go with the flight level change. The plane's speed will be at 77 knots and it will start to descend. So let's go to 3700 till the time plane is aligning itself with the flight path. And now here are the runways. Now at this point, instead of now following uh, this uh, uh, GPS flight path, I will just press CDI and I will go into this VOR mode. And now I will use uh, the heading bug to basically adjust the heading and follow it. Now the plane is actually following this VOR and if you'll uh, just see the plane is going in the middle of the runways it's because it's following the VOR. But if you are following any other airport in which, you know, um, uh, the approach based on the VR is a bit complex, it goes, takes you here and there, different places, <laughs> then at least you will have this in the flight path. So you will know how to follow it. That approach will automatically be loaded. Then either you can use autopilot to follow this path or you can just use the heading mode to basically fly it. Uh, no, it's not right now. It's in the roll mode. So let's go into the heading mode. This is basically the FMA, flight mode in theater. Flight level change is active, 77 knots. Now you can see uh, there are no indicators coming um, as you see in the ILS approach and uh, you see it in the RNP approach. So nothing is coming. You have to descend towards the runway based on your piloting skills. Now as you can see, speed is reducing. I can extend the flaps. And plus I can just give some throttle to give some speed. Try to keep the speed at uh, 65. So I can just deactivate the autopilot and then fly the plane myself. So uh, there is one trick that I do while flying the Cessna 172. I keep the runway between these two screws. <laughs> it's a very good indication. And just keep the runway over here on this uh, panel then you will be, you know, nicely following the glide path. This is a good way to land. I think this trick will work for you if you're not using any instruments or autopilot to land. Because as long as you can see the runway, it means you are descending. If you cannot, if you, you cannot see the runway, either you're going straight or you're going up, obviously like this. So if you're seeing the runway, and if you're just going like this, your descent rate is really high. And uh, this is a good descent rate. So just keep the runway over here. And uh, in between these two screws. And uh, you will be good. No rocket science behind it. So right now, full flaps. Uh, let's check if we have the lights. Landing lights on. 
Now you will see that there is a little bit of def uh, deflection over here in the CDI needle because uh, as I've told you before, we are just not in front of the runways, somewhere here in the middle of these two runways. Now after the final approach fix, uh, this BTR, it's not showing you the runway because you know the approach is the BTR. The plane is actually considering BTR to land, uh, the VOR. So that's where no runway coming, but it's uh, 5.4 nautical miles away. Now you can see, I can also uh, see the papi lights. They're all white, so it means I'm coming at a higher altitude. So maybe what I can do is this, reduce the throttle and just try to pitch down more. So now the papi lights will help me with the glide path or the vertical path. Just 500 feet to go. And now two red, two white, as you can see. So now I'm following it. If all were um, red, it means I'm at a lower altitude. So I have to pitch up a bit. So that's how you read the papi lights. Now this is my target zone. Let's increase the throttle a bit because the speed is dropping. 65 knots, 60 knots, good speed to land this plane yeah. now it's good you can see if the runways between the two screws you are aligned with the center line so it's a good indication Bring the throttle to idle, pitch up, and uh, that's it. So this is how you perform a viewer approach and landing. I hope this was a useful video for you. And I hope all of the videos that I've uploaded for Cessna 172 were really helpful for you. I will be uploading more videos uh, for Cessna 172. So subscribe to my channel and uh, press the bell icon so that you can get the notifications every time when I upload the video. If you've got any questions, the comment section is there for you. Or if you want to add anything to this video, the comment section is there for you. Thank you very much for watching this channel. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.